Fabian Henschke. Christian Jenschke fordert den allerersten European Tour Champion heraus. Er gewann damals die Veranstaltung in Wiener Neustadt 2012. Steht bei vier PDC-Erfolgen, ist die aktuelle 44 der Welt. The Force, Justin Pipe! Und Match Nummer 3 bedeutet, unser zweiter Caller ist hier auf der Bühne. Auch für ihn ein herzliches Willkommen, George Noble. Game 3 hier at the International Darts Open from the Saxon Arena in Riesa. And we've got a man who won the very first European Tour in its current incarnation. The Austrian Darts Open winner, the force Justin Pipe against the guy playing his very first European Tour. Christian Jenschke, one of the host nation qualifiers. 25-year-old from Mannheim in Germany, which is, of course, where we were last weekend. And the second of our Euro Tour triple header this month, Austria, then Mannheim, and now in East Germany at Riesa. Justin Pipe has come into some serious form. It all started on the European Tour earlier this year when genuine fears about whether Pipe would be able to keep his tour card come the end of the year... Just nothing seemed to be going for him. He had a run to the final day of that European Tour event and things started to turn for him. He started going on runs and the Pro Tour made a, a final in July. He was a quarter-finalist midweek, throwing enormous averages. He averaged 100 for every single one of his games or over the course of all his games in the midweek Pro Tour. He's made a board final and a quarter final. Justin Pipe, the force, comes here in good form and he has an opportunity to move through to the second round to set up a clash with the UK Open champion Nathan Aspinall, seeded number seven here this weekend. Mark Webster joins me. Dan Dawson in the commentary box. George Noble calling first this one. Like Christian to throw first. Game on. And Webber, you must look at Pipe and think, well, if players can come back into form like that, then that gives hope to everybody on the tour who's been having tough times. Yeah, of course, and I, I echo what you said, Dan. 100. It wasn't looking good for Justin at the beginning of the year. He, he just couldn't find any form. He, um, he missed out on the World Championship at the back end of the year, like myself, for the first time. And he just, yeah, he just wasn't hitting the big numbers. And now, he's, like you said, he recorded that throwing average of 100 in every game this week. And 100. He only got eliminated, really, because of a, a counting error. So he, he's back to the form that we saw back in 2012, 2013. And there's no fears about that tour card now. He's, he's shooting up the rankings. 85. And you expect Justin just to be a bit too good for Christian in this match. Well, just to put into context how well he played midweek in Barnsley. He had eight games. He has averaged over 100 in five 95. Of them. The other three averages are 94, 95 and 98. But within that, there was an average of 106 and 112 against Ryan Joyce. 58. I mean, that is, that's about as high as numbers as I've ever seen Justin throw. Yeah, just ph phenomenal averages from Justin. And he's reaping the rewards. He's, he's back to playing like he was years ago when he was winning the Pro Tours. And he was, he was a hard person to 58. play against. He, I think he'd lost that fear. He, was, he, he wasn't being awkward to play against. He was... He, he, he was suffering first round defeats week in, week out on the Pro Tour last year, and it just wasn't the Justin Pike we knew from years ago. But he's getting back to that form. And 100. He, he sped up his throw a little bit as well. He's And he, ju he, he just looks happy up there again and going back up the rankings. It's got to be 
a difficult feeling to deal with, hasn't it? When you've been 60. on the tour for quite some time and you've won things and you've had deep runs in TV tournaments, just see if Jenschke can put a dent in this. When you're defending money and you're not defending enough of it, you might be winning some games, but you're not defending three. enough, and all you're doing is going backwards. That's got to be an unnerving feeling, hasn't it, Webby? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's what I'm experiencing at the moment. It's just you, you, you're looking over your shoulder, and obviously Justin's managed to turn it around. I haven't managed to just as yet, but one hundred and fifty. It's tough because you, British Uniform, one hundred and fifty. A few years back, you're playing with the freedom that you're looking to get in events, and when you're playing, just to sort of save your career, it adds a different pressure, and that. Testament to Justin, he's been playing under that pressure and, and, and he's rose to it. 83. The has set this up Justin quite Rickmore nicely. 48. Justin, look at double 16. Next door for double 8. 32. Now then, Christian, for Christian your first Rickmore ever leg, 32. your first ever game on the European Tour. And this would be a nerve set of the young man. Well, I'll start. It's just moving over. 16. And just goes inside. Justin, you require 16. When you get opportunities to win a leg in 21 downs against Justin Pipe, you've got to take it because they won't Here keep coming. Leg. Justin Pipe. There's the early so. breaker throw. So, in this form, at any rate. Game on. Now, Justin, at some point, you expect him. Does hit a little purple patch 100. because he's certainly been having those of late. We've not seen a great deal of him on the European tour. He had that very, very good run to the quarterfinal of the very first so event in Leverkusen, the European Darts Open. But although we saw him in the Czech Darts Open and indeed in Austria, he only managed to win one game over those two tournaments. So he comes into this with 81. eight grand to his name on the European Tour Order of Merit. Now, we've still got Gibraltar to come. But you may be looking at having to win something like £13,000 if you're going to make it to the European Championship, one of the big tournaments of the year. And time is running out. So for guys like Justin, who's just outside the 32 qualifying spots... This is a big opportunity. 100. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good first round draw for Justin. And like we said, you'd expect him to get the job done. But yeah, with with regards to the, the European finals end of the year, he's uh, still a lot of work to do. Qualification for Gibraltar takes place next week, and that's hard enough in itself. And winning games at the actual event. The mindset must have totally changed for Justin, though. I mean, can he fill this up? Not quite, but perhaps this time last year, he'd have been going there thinking, right, I need to qualify for this, or I've got to win three games in a row. I haven't done that very much this year. Whereas here, he must be coming here thinking, this is doable. Yeah, of course. I'm he'll, he'll admit himself he's probably ahead of schedule because he wasn't playing well. And he said that upturn in form stemming from that run to the quarter-finals in the first European Tour of the year. Yeah, well, his run to a, a Pro Tour Justin final Uruguay in Barnsley Uruguay. showed that that was not a fluke. It wasn't just a one-off, but there's still some life in the force yet. And his performance as midweek in Barnsley suggests there could be a lot of life. And just that doesn't look a bad guide for him. Yeah, he's on the second leg. Manages yeah, to find one. the double 16 to double his lead. To throw first. Game on. So two legs on the trot for Justin. And in 18 and 20 darts, it's a comfortable start for Justin Pipe. 85. Come oh, on, Webber, you're the expert. If you're taking a look at Christian Jenschke for the first time, what do you make of the throwing action? What do you make of him as a prospect? Admittedly, we've only seen two legs of him. Yeah, he's... 100. He, he looks okay. He doesn't look. He didn't really look nervous. He looked a bit as if he rushed his darts at that double sixteen. But there's no real sign. It's a little bit snatchy, but it's a bit of a lunge there, isn't yeah, it? It's a bit of movement forward with the body when he goes to throw the dart. Which you know, I mean, I know John Henderson gets away with it, but in general, you want to be stock still. 
You can see Justin's a lot more static when he's releasing the dart. Hendo's just a big exception to the rule, isn't yes, he? Yes, exactly. Just, uh, <laughs> you don't teach people to throw like John Henderson. 96. But no, yeah, it is a little bit snatchy, and it showed that last visit. A score of 15, and he's in danger of letting this match run away from him. He did, however, post an average 96 in qualifying in his first game. He only won four games to get here. Uh, and he's only... Mannheim event and this one are the only two qualifiers he's played. So the fact that he's come through the qualifiers to make it to one of them is an achievement in itself. And of course, first time on a big stage against a, a proven winner 16. in PDC darts, it's always going to be difficult to step up and and play well, play your best stuff. But at the minute... I mean, he's averaging with three darts. What he could have averaged with two darts in his opening game of qualifying. Yeah, it's just not happened for him. I think that Third first leg would have helped. It was a nervy one, and he put three darts at the double. Just that opening hole to throw may have settled him down. His throws under pressure again in this leg, and it's a long, long way back. If he gets broken 100. again from Justin. And it's not as if you're, not, you're watching where his darts are going. It's not as if he is missing wildly or anything like that. It's just that it's not quite accurate. I'm not picking up the trebles. And then obviously those misses at double. Although Justin Pipe has probably registered the worst visit of the entire match there. In scoring terms. Yeah, he's, he's just, he's, Christian's making it all a bit too easy for Justin at the minute. Because Justin ain't playing like he can with a... Uh, we're picking up all his averages, um, the 100 in the week. He's nowhere near that in a minute, but he's comfortably winning the tie. Eighty. Now then, Yenchka, 97. Two darts out. Pipe on one himself. Treble 18 for double 12. 57, Justin, you require 78. And to punish him for a double break and to put Justin Pipe firmly in the driving seat and pile all kinds of pressure on Christian Jenschke. Straight over the top of that. Must be a big lead for Justin. This is so three a double for Christian, 40. just like he had in the first leg. This time at tops. And he Jordan hits it with his first start, and there's the show of emotion, and he wins his first leg on the European stage. Well, that could change things here, or it could just spur Justin Pipe into life. <laughs> just smile and celebration at that one. Yeah, it was like a little smirk from Justin as if... Just telling his opponent he's going to put his foot on the gas now because it's just been a very, very slow start from both players. Sixty. We'll follow it with the last one, but not a million miles behind the pipe in this one. Getting that leg on the ball will definitely settle Christian as well. Just that first leg. What was your first time on a stage like, Mark? You were quite, you were quite a bolshy, confident young man when you started playing big stage darts, though, weren't you? Um, yeah, I suppose. I look back to my, my first game. was his Hendo in a, in a British Internationals. That's when I went on a stage where there's... Sort of, you know, big crowd watching, and then, yeah, I just I sort of went up there to enjoy it at the time, and then, yeah, as you you get on bigger stages and, and bigger tournaments, and you just you kind of thrive on it when you're playing well and you enjoy it. Fifty-six. I, I think that's what Christian's got to do in this in this first round. So you, you've got to come here and try and win, and you have that mentality. But realistically, it's his, he's only playing two European qualifiers. He's got through one, which is difficult in itself. So you've just got to try and enjoy it and take the experience away, regard, regardless of the result. All the pressure you would think is on Justin Pipe in this game. Although, the longer it stayed, Christian Jenschke nil, 
thought it would have piled some Ooh. pressure on, but he got that first leg, and now maybe he just thinks, well, uh, objective one achieved. Now just see see how close I can make this. Yeah, that, that, that's it. He's just got to try and warm to the task now and see what sort of pressure he can apply and you know, test himself, see where he's at. He's never played in this environment. And this is going to tell him a lot of things going forward, see how he deals with it, and he hopes that he'll get a lot more goals on these big stages. Can he force his way in between those two? 40. He can, but not into the red bit. Jenschke somehow managed to leave himself a finish, despite not hitting the targets he was going for or any of his three previous darts. And if he puts another in there, he gets one at ball. Oh, that would have livened things up a bit. 96. Yeah, yeah. Just plenty of space there left as well. So just will be conscious that this is getting a bit scrappy. I want to get rid of this double ten. Very cagey affair so far. Yeah, he's Justin play. takes the leg. Yeah, and restores the two-leg lead. First. Game on. Started that leg with a, a maximum Justin Pipe and then just seemed to switch. Oh, it was like he almost thought he got the leg won and I'm not quite sure he's going to get that 60. easier ride unless he bucks his ideas up. He's nowhere near the levels of performance we saw from him midweek in Barnsley where it was taking some... Very, very decent stuff to beat him. Van Gerwen beat him on the Tuesday, averaging more than 101. And then Scott Taylor had that incredible 60. run to the semi-finals, beat him with a 98 average in a tight game where, as Mark mentioned, Justin made a counting error that cost him a leg. Actually finished 104. 100. Only one at 102. And that's not how the game works. No, and at, and at a critical moment as well, and he actually returned for the shot as well. But obviously, Scott had applied the pressure, and it was the telling moment. Have you ever managed to lose a game for a miscount? Um, 60. I don't think I have. Have you won a game for a miscount? No. Do you know what? One thing I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm normally a steady counter. Someone will no doubt will prove me wrong. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I've, uh, no, I've, I'm normally pretty steady. 78. Your mate Devon's always good for, uh, good for a miscount. Oh, he did a legendary one in the World Cup a few <laughs> years back. I think he's done two at the World Cup, hasn't he? Yeah, he did one with, with, with me, and Rich, me and Richie were on the receiving end, and he's, he's done one on the European tour stage, hasn't he? So, 140. Yeah, I, think, I think with Devon, it was just sort of a buzz to get forward. He's actually, when he did the miscounts, he was playing well at the time, and he's just, just not concentrating and just playing too quick. But yeah, thankfully, I don't think he's done no, anything for, for a while now. Well, Jenschke moving down to the 19s to leave a finish, and that that shows that he is thinking clearly. He accidentally left 164 in the last leg. This leg, he's left it on purpose. Yeah, if Justin's not careful, he could get himself embroiled here because obviously he knows it's an opponent. His opponent's not playing well, and it's an opponent he should beat. But whilst you're only one break a throw ahead, oh, another one in there. 100. Not Justin quite. Corner, now then, Justin. Plenty of room for a second one. Oh, and unlucky. Justin, one of those players who prefer to have his darts low in the travel bed 64. there. But he does leave himself three at double four if he returns. He might not, though. Stay there, so double 16. To claw another leg back. Just composing himself. And he hits it. Big finish from Christian Jenska. Still only the one breaker throw for Justin, and he'll be a. He, he won't be worried yet, but he'll be a bit concerned about how he's playing, and he's not managed to put his opponent to bed. 45. It must be. I mean, look, we don't know. Justin might have been hitting everything in the practice room, or he might have, a number of times you hear players go, oh, I was fantastic in the practice room, and then it's gone horribly wrong on the, the stage. Best lines and darts, though, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. 100. Or the other way around. That was rubbish out there. You know, the number of times you see somebody go and average 107, and they go, oh, I couldn't, couldn't hit anything in the practice. It was going horribly. I was really worried about how I was going to play, and then it all suddenly clicked. But for Justin to have played so brilliantly, in terms of averages, the best couple of days Easy he's had for a long, long time, and then turn up here and for this sort of performance to turn. It must be baffling and frustrating and a little bit worrying, isn't it? Yeah, Whoa! it's... it's <laughs> and there's Maximum Christian just applying the pressure, but it's just... 
it's probably a bit of pressure he's putting on himself now as he expects he wants to carry on hitting 100 averages all the time and, and the reality is he's not going to do that but I don't think we expected him to, to play like this 58 and Jenschke is getting better and there is now only about a point in the averages here because yeah there you in fact yeah it is just a point and we're expecting much, much more from Justin Pipe. Didn't really know what to expect from Jenschke. He had a, a big range of performance in his qualifiers. 196 average, but coupled in the 70s. And yeah, we touched on it. If you 43. In the previous leg, Justin will be a little bit conscious not to get embroiled in a match, and he is doing here. Jenschke's got six starts at least to get rid of 176, and that's a good start. He'll stay there on the treble to hopefully leave 36. Eighty-three. Oh, the little adjustment doesn't work for him, but Pipe is so far back, unless... Needs another Saliva check out. 100, if you require 93. So to use the ball route for Christian. He start on treble 19. He's just got to stay straight, set up the shot. So big 20 for tops. 53. 15 darts thrown, just in pipe, only on 210. Yeah, a shocker for the force. Decent switch. Ooh, Very decent. 28. That applies a little bit of pressure. Christian to level up the match. Bit of a wild first one. Not the first time he's done that move across the hockey and then just it straight, str throw it straight down that new line. But that yeah. makes up for it. Double five, double 15, and Christian Jenschke has broken Pipe's throw. Leveled this game at three apiece, is now throwing for the lead against a guy who was first. smashing in game big off. averages midweek in Barnsley. Yeah, real courage shown from Christian Jenschke. He's just another dart to clinch the double break and lead 3-0, and since then... Christian Jenska's, I won't say he's upped his game majorly, but he's, look, he's looked a lot more comfortable. I think Justin's dropped his level. But that, that, that was a real poor leg from Justin, and he, he, he surrendered the breaker throw back. He didn't. 45. And a little bit of frustration creeping in there, you can see it. Well, maybe a little bit of fire is what Justin Pipe needs. To turn things around, because at the minute he is sleepwalking to a shock defeat. Only down to the 19s. It's a good effect. Ooh, Very good effect. Yeah, a good visit from Justin Pipe and a, a, a change of target. Cause he, he's just getting fed up, wasn't he? he wasn't, <laughs> he's been nowhere near the treble for the so last leg and a half. Mm. But straight down and three 19s. Is that tactic you've employed much? Moving, changing your, your scoring. No, I'm a bit stubborn like that, Dan. I'll stay there. I'm the same with doubles as well. I just won't switch away. But <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's it's working for Justin. Ooh, Five treble 19s out of six stars thrown. Well, would Justin go two 99. treble 19s for double 19? Justin required 152. He's going back up the board. He should have done. <laughs> 60. And there we see. He's just not happened on the treble 20 for Justin at the minute. But he will return. For the visit of 92. 20. Should be for the break Justin of throw. 92. switch over to the treble 12. He has done, so she's got to set it up now. 52. And a big ask for Christian. Christian, you require 155. It is, but it could be a match winner, effectively. Not even close with that one, I'm afraid. And yanking them away to the left. 
32. Justin, you require 40. So tops to move back in front. For Pipey. And they're awkward. 20. Yeah, very awkward, isn't you? Justin, you require 100. Hear the frustration, Justin. This is where that previous visit from Christian is even more costly now. Start in the 19s. And bullseye. What a shot this would be. 76. Well, Justin, you require 20. Got himself a dart at it. But missed it by a distance. And Pipe can work his way in. And it does do that. And does he break Jenschka's throw. And does get his nose in front once more. But Justin Pipe is unconvincing in this one. Yeah, Justin to throw first. You expect Justin to get over the line, but it's just one of those games. It just hasn't happened for him. It's, he, he made a conscious switch to the treble 19s in that previous leg, and that helped him gain the lead, but he still wasn't convincing at the back end of the leg. But he got the breaker throw. And the average is illustrating what sort of game we've had. It's just not happened to both players. Twelve darts missed at double. Fifty-nine. My pipe, Jenschke. Missing three, of course, in the opening leg, as well as that one in at bullseye in the last leg. I mean, this could have been different. Justin Pipe. You see, in treble twenty, the size of a pea, and treble nineteen, the size of a mara. It is complete chalk and cheese. His scoring ability on those two segments of the board. 85. Yeah, he's come down with real success on the treble 19 in the last leg and a half. Uh, he's, he's, that was a snatchy dart as well. 81. Uh, good last one with Justin. Justin knows if he does eventually get over the line of this match, he'll have to whip it tomorrow. Playing against the UK Open champion and World Series winner Nathan Aspinall. 60. Yeah, who hadn't had a, a stunning return to action after the August break, although there were signs from the ASP midweek. Although Justin is giving us a fantastic reason why we should disregard everything that happened in Barnsley this week when looking at who's going to perform here in Risa. Yeah, a completely different challenge for Justin Pipe today, and it's just he's doing enough, but Easy it's one of them. If he does get over the line, Dan, it's one to just forget about. And look ahead to tomorrow's tie with Nathan if he does eventually get over the line. Well, an ugly win, which is what Justin is attempting oh, to come away with here. 32. It could be a very, very important one because if Justin Pipe could win this and then back it up with one or two more wins this weekend, he could secure his place at the European Championship 100. where you can earn a Justin huge amount 52. of money. Over to double 16. To put him one away. Yeah, and he hits it. And unconvincingly, Justin Pipe first. goes within Eight one leg of the second round. Well, he did go two legs up in this match, 2 0, and then just went missing for a bit. Cannot afford to do the same because Jenska, right, it's not been a, a stunning debut so far from him, but there have been little moments when he's looked dangerous. And we have seen some incredible debuts from unheralded players on the Euro Tour. Florian Hempel, of course, won 6-0 against Ryan Harrington. We saw Adam Gaulas, the young player from the Czech Republic, beat Ross Smith with an average of almost 100 in his debut, only 17 years old. Yeah, that was very impressive as well, because Ross Smith was with him as well. He threw everything at him, but Adam Gaulas... Great performance. One to look out for, that is for sure. Oh, that is a textbook Justin Pipe 180. First start just above the bottom wire. And it's just like a little tray of tungsten to lay the other two on. This isn't a bad response. Oh. 114. And lucky with the last one, Jenska. Justin Pipe. Easier game when you can remember where treble 20 is, isn't it? Justin seems to have forgotten about it for half of this match, and then 
he suddenly found it, perhaps as he's opened up that two-leg advantage and he's just felt a little 55. bit more easy yeah, about yeah, the situation. Yeah, won. definitely, because obviously the alarm bells would have been ringing at 3 all when he, he gifted the break of throw back, but his experience has shown up on that stage, isn't it? He knows it's a poor performance, but winning when you're not playing well is a, is a, is a testament of a true play. Two great player with Justin no, Ace. Skirts in your corner and, and he very nearly did win it there on the bullseye. Justin Pipe, one of the only players in the world you'll see who has to move to hit the bullseye if he's got a dart in the in the twenty segment because his darts hang so low that it will block his route. One hundred and five pressure from Yenchka. Does it matter though? Double eight for the force and a six three win. Gets it, wins it, and Justin Pike, superb midweek. Less than that today, but just enough to see off the German debutant Christian Jenschke. We will see the force take on the ASP. The UK Open champion Nathan Aspinall awaits as Justin Pike knows that a couple more wins here this weekend will secure his ticket to Göttingen and the European Championship. Der also in die zweite Runde einzieht, der morgen es mit dem UK Open Champion Nathan Aspinall zu tun bekommt. Und äh, Christian Jenschke, der wird mit Sicherheit Blut geleckt haben und er wird eine umso größere Lust bekommen haben, hier sich ein weiteres Mal im nächsten Jahr dann zu qualifizieren. 2020 wird man wahrscheinlich noch ein bisschen mehr vom 25-Jährigen aus Mannheim Darf man gar nicht vergessen. Alles neu für ihn. Große Bühne, großer Gegner. Applaus für Christian Jenschke. <laughs> Justin, congratulations. Yeah, I mean, through, you know, that's, that's uh, what's about. Elmer, honestly, I'd rather win with a 60 average than lose with 110. And I just said to Christian, the, the, hard, the hardest games to win are the ones that you should win. And, you know, of course, you know, I've, I've had a good couple of days. I've been playing really well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Christian's new to the big stage and, um, in front of 10 people. <laughs> I'm going to bar around in a minute. 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> 15. You, you know, uh, and, and it really is. It's the hardest game to win. And, and tomorrow against Nathan, then obviously I'll relax and I'll play. And against Christian I was so tense and um, he's, he's such a nice lad and um, you know it, it, that was hard that was hard <laughs> <laughs> so how is the form right now you said it two days ago you, you played high averages you, you played a couple of really good matches how is the form right now well you're playing players that are you know playing week in week out and I, I don't know nothing about Christian and uh, you know that puts pressure on me mm -hmm. it really does I mean obviously in front of his home crowd everybody wants him to win of course they do and um, it, it, so that, that that's really difficult, but um, I, form is temporary, isn't it? You know, you, you only can only play as well as you can on that day, and um, it means nothing what I've done three days ago, four days ago. It's tomorrow now that counts, and um, I've got to look forward to tomorrow. Cool. See you tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Justin Pipe. Der ist froh, dass er durch ist und er sagt, er war echt nervös und er war verspannt und er wusste, dass ihr alle natürlich Christian Jenschke die Daumen drücken. Das sind diese Partien, so sagt Justin.